We all have plenty of stuff that needs mending, whether it's your favorite socks that you burned a hole in, or your dog decided your favorite hat was a chew toy, or your toddler decided this season's hottest new accessory is scissors, or you had some surprise uninvited guests like carpet beetles or moths. I have a lot of things that need mending too. This is my basket and there are a lot of different ways to mend things. So today I'm gonna show you how I mended a hole in this sweater using a mini loom called a speed weave. Here we go. I live in the forest with my family. I own a business that sells hand dyed domestic yarn. And I do a lot of making from fiber arts to gluten free baking to permaculture gardening. Let's get into it. There are several holes in this sweater that have been here for a couple of years now. Here are the tools I'm going to use. This is a speed weave mini mending loom. Got some waste yarn. Well, not waste yarn, it's leftover yarn. And I've got a darning needle and a latch hook. I'm not gonna use the latch hook today, just the darning needle and a pair of little scissors. I cut off about a yard of yarn to use for this patch. This was only enough for the warp portion, which is the vertical strands that go up and down. I cut off a new piece when I was ready to do the weft, which are the horizontal strands. To start off, you put the little wooden disc on the inside of the piece that you're mending. And then you stretch the part of the fabric that has the hole in it over the wood. And it has a little ridge on the outside of the circle for a rubber band to fit in it to secure everything in place. The loom itself has a little arch that fits along the circular wooden disc, but you can make the patch any size you want, but if you really only want it basically over the hole only, it makes it a lot easier to get the top of the hole pretty close to where the hooks are on the loom at the top. I adjusted where the hole was sitting on the wooden disc, but of course it was a bit of a struggle. So just be aware that the rubber bands don't always want to cooperate with you. I got my darning needle threaded with the yarn. By the way, this is um, a fingering sock weight yarn that I had. This seems to be a pretty good thickness of yarn to use with this little mending loom. Today I'm going to use all of the hooks, all 14 of the hooks across on the loom. So once you decide how wide you're going to make it, find the first hook that you're going to use and pick up a stitch of your fabric and pull your yarn through that that is right in line with that hook. This is going to secure your mending yarn in place. You see the tail now, but it's not going to be there at the end. You will fish it through to the inside and weave it in when it's done. You're gonna loop your yarn around that first hook it makes it a lot easier to do so if all of your hooks are standing up straight instead of laying to the left or the right side. To continue, pick up another stitch on your fabric and continue looping it around the hooks at the top and then down and up and down and up all the way across.
I probably should have made this yarn a bit longer. This little like two or three inch tail was all I had left. At any rate, I got another length of yarn. I made sure my needles were to one side by, I smoothed them all over to the right. And I started by picking up a stitch on the fabric to the left of the little patch that I'm making. Now I'm gonna use the darning needle to pick up every other strand. Go over, under, over, under. The way that the needles, the hooks are laying will make one side rise up higher than the other. So that's the one that you're putting your needle underneath. It also really helps to, once you get your needle under a strand to kind of run it down the length of it to make sure that you have the whole strand of yarn and not just a fuzzy or a little fiber because if you only have that, it's gonna get stuck and you're not gonna be able to push your yarn down to the bottom. Don't forget to flip your needles over to the left and then you're gonna do the same thing picking up a stitch on the right side this time and going over under over under it'll be the opposite one that you did the last time make sure that when you are putting your needle through that you are pressing down the previous row that you wove through down to the bottom. This is called beading in the weaving world. You don't have to do it very hard, you just kind of press it gently so that it's all getting um, packed and stacked down at the bottom. Kind of like Tetris. Once you run out of weaving space, it's time to take off your little loom. Say hi to George. You pop the rubber band off and you can either use your darning needle to pop the threads off of the hooks or you can just kind of push the loom in a downward direction and they'll all come off or you can if it helps you can put the needles um, in the upright position it'll come off pretty easily I use my darning needle to whip stitch the patch to the fabric I just did this by picking up a stitch of the knit fabric and then pulling this the yarn through a loop on the patch just doing that over and over across, just making sure that I'm not tying a knot. I'm just doing around and around, all the way across, very simple. The patch is on, the hole is covered, so you can take out your little wooden disc, take off the rubber band, get the disc out of there, and all you have to do is weave your ends in on the inside of your fabric, and that's it. You just mended a hole with a tiny little loom. I'm very proud of you. Snip off your ends and... Now make a plan for the rest of the holes in your sweater.